Three regional Superjet SJ-100 aircraft are currently engaged in a test program in anticipation of serial production in 2026. The question arises, what type of aircraft will Russian civil aviation ultimately receive? And more importantly, what is so innovative about the Superjet that it has taken so long to enter production after 2022? In a recent interview, Alexander Dolotovsky, the director of the Superjet program and deputy general director of PJSC Yakovlev, provided a detailed explanation. His primary argument was that the new aircraft is entirely new and entirely Russian. He stated that the import substitution program had an impact on all systems and components of the aircraft, including those that were not previously deemed critical. For instance, the cockpit glazing, which was supplied by the Romishin Research and Production Association, and the passenger cabin windows, which were manufactured in Smara, were both affected. The interior of the aircraft was entirely manufactured domestically, including the passenger cabin equipment, seats, and small plastic elements. The Russian-made PD-8 engine is the main innovation, which replaces the previous French-Russian SAM-146 and guarantees complete independence from Western suppliers. Despite being marketed as a Russian aircraft, the original Superjet 100, SSJ-100, was largely dependent on Western components. Estimates indicate that 60 to 70 percent of its parts were manufactured abroad. Their production included critical systems, including the SAM-146 engine, co-produced with Francis Safran, avionics, landing gear, and cabin interiors. The program faced significant vulnerabilities, including export controls and licensing obstacles, before full-scale sanctions were imposed due to this dependence. This dependence on intricate international supply chains also resulted in increased costs and delays. Furthermore, the political environment that emerged following the 2014 annexation of Crimea introduced additional risks as early indications of Western control tightening began to emerge. It was actually the end of 2019 when the initiative to eliminate the superjet from foreign dependence started. There has been an immense amount of effort. The modernization, which encompasses all systems, not just the primary ones, including the interior of the passenger cabin, is comparable in scope to the complete development of a new aircraft, which, under the most favorable circumstances, typically requires 8 to 12 years, as indicated by statistics from the past 30 to 40 years. In a mere six years, Russia virtually developed a new, modern passenger aircraft, while the West was preoccupied with enforcing sanctions. Once more, it is important to mention that six years is the standard, as opposed to the usual ten or more in the West. Consequently, Russia is presented with an aircraft that appears to be identical to the original Superjet from the outside, but in reality, it is a completely distinct model. This aircraft is devoid of any component that had been used in the superjets that are presently in operation and transporting passengers. This aircraft has been entirely reconstructed from the ground up. The aircraft is being developed by over 60 Russian aviation companies, in addition to dozens of subcontractors. The diminutive superjet is bolstering the Russian economy, ensuring the employment and sustenance of tens of thousands of individuals throughout the nation. The T2214 is still being developed, and the MC21 is larger. Additionally, the L114300 is also advancing at a rapid pace. According to Dolotovsky, the Romashin Scientific Production Association supplies the cockpit glazing. The windows of the passenger cabin are manufactured in Samara using domestic materials and Russian design documentation. The interior of the aircraft is entirely made in Russia, including the seats, cabin apparatus, and plastic components. The aircraft is equipped with a control system, complete display and indication system, alarm system, radio communication system, radio navigation system, inertial systems, airspeed measurement system, landing gear, landing gear brake system, main power plant, auxiliary power unit, fuel system, crew oxygen system, and passenger oxygen system. Additionally, it is import substituted. In reality, it is possible to access the ATA catalog, which is a standardized list of aircraft systems, and mark each item from the beginning to the end. Once more, this aircraft contains no non-import substituted components or systems. The Superjet has not only become entirely Russian, but it has also become more alluring to operators.
The updated aircraft's base configuration now includes innovative winglets, an enlarged landing gear entrance that enhances aerodynamic and technical characteristics, and a new cockpit with wide rectangular displays that provide a more comprehensive information presentation than previous models. The new Superjet is currently being developed at maximum speed. Three prototypes are currently enduring a rigorous test program, with approximately 200 flights scheduled to certify the aircraft by the end of 2025, as previously mentioned. Serial production and airline deliveries are scheduled for 2026, with an initial government order for 20 units and plans for over 140 units by 2030. The SJ-100 is a critical component of Russia's strategy for technological independence and aviation self-sufficiency in the face of Western sanctions. Now, do you think Russia has effectively checkmated Western nations in the superjet category? Let us know in the comments. Feel free to like, subscribe, and share our videos. Also, we invite you to join our membership.